Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Improved Podcast. My name is Chase Collins. This is the official podcast of Classic Studios, and I am so excited today. Happy Monday. It is currently 5 a.m., and I'm about to go on a run. I just wanted to jump on here, introduce this podcast, and get everybody's week started right. How are you doing this week? Do you have any big plans this week? Do you have any big goals? I know I do. I mentioned last week that I had a breakthrough with my screenplay, and I am so excited to get jumping or jump into that, (laughs) start working on that, start writing the screenplay. It's going to be uh, just, I'm excited to get back to screenwriting. If you've been following along, you've known that I've been sort of struggling, wrestling with my time management as I've been getting all these companies started. And I finally feel like, okay, everything's sort of running on autopilot. I can, I can start dedicating some time to my screenwriting. So that's my goal for this week. I hope you have a goal for this week and I hope you, I hope you achieve that goal. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about before we got started is give a little bit of background to this guest that we have on today. And it is a privilege for me to introduce this person. He is a very special guest. His name is Elijah, and he is actually a student who is out in Rome going to film school. And he and I linked up over Reddit. He was looking to hire a screenwriter for his student film that he needs to produce for his uh you know final thesis project for his undergraduate degree right and i jumped at the opportunity i was like hey i'm a screenwriter i'm looking for work i have time i can write a screenplay for you how long does it need to be uh what's the premise what's the you know I don't know, the story structure. What do you want to do? It's a, is it a short film? Is it a feature? And obviously it's a short film. Uh, and so we linked up and we were able to really hit it off. It was great. This isn't our first time meeting. It wasn't on the podcast. We, we got to, you know, talking beforehand and I wrote a little treatment and, you know, I got his feedback and he gave me sort of his story idea that he had. And I took that and ran with it and we were able to come up with a really compelling story that I think is really exciting. And this meeting is one of the first meetings that he had notes on. Um, So he had some notes from his professor and his personal notes of what he wanted the story to go based on my first initial draft and outline. So that's what you'll hear today is sort of an overview of this story. It's a short film called Dawn, and it is sort of a modern day retelling of Prometheus um, set in the near future with, you know, artificial intelligence and technology as the theme. So I hope you enjoy this. I will let you all go, but have a great day. Happy Monday. Bye-bye. Sweet. All right, we got Craig in here. Craig's the Craig, the man. All right, all right. All right, let me go back to how do I make this video full screen again? Oh, okay, there we go. Whoa, <laughs> dude, I thought that was one of your friends. I was like, oh man, already, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, sweet man. Um, yeah, dude. So I've been good, man. I um started working on that script a little bit, and then I got the message from you to sort of hold off because you got feedback from your professor. So I put a pause on any progress that I was making, which, um, you know, stifles momentum a little bit, but I'm excited to get the notes back. Um, before you called, I was just working on a new little, a little video for, um, like promotional material for the podcast and stuff like that. So that's what I was working on. Um, just now called, how have you been, dude? I heard you were sick. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so basically I think the first time we talked, I was still working at this job and basically it was like my first full-time job in like two years. Cause you know, I'm a student, so it's much easier to just find internships. Yeah. So it was like my, my first full-time job in two years. And so I was just like completely like, you know, like boom, 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 like every, every minute doing something. I came to Rome and then, you know, back to like my studies and I got like 
I mean, my, my roommate, she describes it as like senioritis, but dude, I just got hit by like the worst thing of like fatigue and like just not caring about what's going on, at, at, you know, in school or anything like that. I was just like so tired and like honestly kind of depressed and oh, um, yeah, man. And then like, I was like ready to go and then I just got sick and I was like, dude, are you serious? Like <laughs> I've been waiting to get started for so long, but now, <laughs> you know, I'm well enough to make this call. So I think... I think I'm doing better. I agree. Well, good. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. on the mend. It sucks when like mo- motivation strikes and then like the universe just says, hold up. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, like I, I had like a lot of, I had a lot of like good realizations and everything. Like it's, it's good to like just be with yourself and like just be able to meditate like that and, and have nothing to like really stop you from doing that. So. Yeah, for sure. Man. And uh, that's good. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so ready to get shooting, but at the same time, yeah, we, we really got to get this story done and yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully, like, with that outline or, like, um, the outline or whatever that I sent you, you can at least, like, get the gears turning of, like, okay, these are the sets we'll need and locations or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think like that, but at the same time, I'm the kind of person who, like, if I allow myself to just think about everything, like, I will. (laughs) So I have to, like, just stick to one thing at a time. Um, Unless it's, like, you know, something that it would benefit from being more like that. Um, but uh, since we're recording this, is this more for like the kind of production process or, uh, like for, for an audience? Cause if it is for an audience, we can maybe catch them up on like where we're at with the development of the story. Uh, do you want to do that or do you want me to do it? it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, okay. You got it. Well, you got it. At, at this point, like, I think you probably know the story a bit better than I do. Um, but like, it's also like such a, mi- like, it's, it's literally like the story you came up with the story I came up with, like just mashed together. And I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, you know, this, the idea kind of boils down, like we tried to think of it in terms of meta- metaphor for a while. Um, and just coming up with like the, the skeleton, of the story was actually pretty difficult because, it was literally like I came up with a story and then I'd like pitch it one way and then we'd like talk about it and then I'd be like, oh no, this could work in a totally different way. And like, mm-hmm. it just kind of went like that for like months. Like, I mean, this idea, I think I've had it for like at least eight months at this point and it's just, it keeps transforming and that's what makes it so exciting to, to like work on is because like as you're working on it, it starts to like slowly like like get less broad and more like specific and, and the details start to really work themselves out. So Essentially, it's it's like the story about like um, you know I I I don't like to think of stories in terms of like if I'm creating or if I'm like working with someone and we're talking about like a, a movie or just like anything anything that like has to be through go through the writing process I don't like to think in terms of like the three act structure like typical like structure and stuff like that and the reason is because there's so many times when I'm like watching a movie and then the first half is like in getting you into the world and you're really liking the characters and you're like, man, like I'm so excited to see where this is going to going to go. Midpoint happens. There's like the turnaround and then like it's all plot. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Mm -hmm. I think working on a short film is really great because it gives us the opportunity to focus on the characters, the events and, and kind of the world and not focus so much on, on the plot. Um, because while there's a lot of events happening, I think it's really like, it's really like about this one story that's getting told and it's getting told through the characters, it's getting told through, you know, the world that we're, we're going to try to build, you know, as much as we can on a small budget and through the cinematography and, and all that stuff. So essentially it's this character who, uh, finds this kind of like, you know, um, as it works now, it's like the metaphor for Prometheus. So he finds you know, kind of the fire to to give to the humans, and that's going to take place. That's going to be in the form of this artificial intelligence, um, and and you know the gods who who Prometheus is taking the fire from and giving it to the humans. That's going to be like you know kind of uh, big tech, like just like these big corporations. And so it's like kind of this almost rebellious uh, story. But I mean, there's just so much to tell. I think that's essentially it. Uh, it's essentially like the retelling of Prometheus, so that way we can give a familiar story so we don't have to worry so much about structure but at the same time we can introduce all new concepts for for even more stories in the future and yeah i think that's pretty much a good catch-up if you want to add anything um then there's like a couple of things i want to add for sure uh so to give a little bit even more background like we, that you you said it but we're working on like a short film and it's for your um i guess what is it like thesis or student project as uh, you're a senior yeah, in my, college 
yeah like i have to i have to turn this in to, to graduate basically yeah so, yeah so it's like your final project and you approached well we linked up over the, on reddit which is kind of cool i think um and you pitched me this idea and i had been you know cooking up in the background of like the premise that you pitched of prometheus and i was like well how would i tell that story and that's how we sort of linked up and we started collaborating and i you know i'm a writer right so i have a good handle on like story structure and um character arcs and like what sort of makes a story work you know conflict and drama and plot and that's why i think like we would be a good collaboration because you're focusing on maybe sort of the getting the bigger picture like creating the world through visual arts and i'm able to take the story and really like craft it into something that'll hopefully like turn into something that's compelling and yeah going back to like we're using like a common myth right it's not like it's a groundbreaking concept but we're updating it we're modernizing it able to tell it in maybe a unique way from both of our perspectives and blending those together so it's really exciting and like the more we talk about it the more we refine it i think the better it gets and where we're at now is I provided you, yeah, like a story treatment, something. I think I broke it out into scenes, but really those are more like plot points. Um, and then I, you said your professor had some notes, and so we're probably going to like run through those and see where the story needs to change or what. I don't know. I've also written a couple of scenes. I've written the first two scenes, which are cool. They're like really ex- – They're. I think you would like them actually. I've taken like a – uh, an approach I think you'll really like. I'm, I almost don't want to spoil it for you, but we can definitely talk <laughs> through it. Um, I mean, I'm excited yeah. to say, like, not much actually has to change. So, oh, like, so don't even cool. worry. Like, it's probably fine. <laughs> you know, like, okay, cool. I'm excited cool. to see this. <laughs> Sweet. Hell yeah. Well, I think that catches everybody up to where we're at. Right. So, um, yeah, what were, well, what were your thoughts on the treatment? Cause I, I know you read it and you were like, hey man, good to go. Let's like move on to the drafting phrase. And I was honestly expecting a little bit of feedback, but you were like all, you're kind of like hands off, like go for it, man. So that gives me a lot of freedom. Uh, Yeah. So when I first read it, I was thinking like, okay, in terms of like, we got to get a story done, you know, and I don't want, cause I know like the more that we like go back and say, okay, we got to redo this. Like it kind of like, it can stagnate the story very quickly and so my thing was like it's at the point where it's like good and if we wanted to refine it like we can always do that but as far as like the story went like it was it was pretty solid and i think for like i said like the scope the budget all that stuff like we just can't we can't be like you know batting some ideas around again and again and again and never getting anywhere so i read that right. and i was like this is perfect let's just do it like i love it you know i'm i'm sure like as i get on to the, on with the process like i'll like it even more so um, yeah, but then I showed it to my professor. I, I like obviously changed it a bit. So the point we're at now in the story is is the idea that essentially uh, Dax is this delivery guy. Uh, he you know gets this package. He gets you know burned by curiosity. He you know plugs a package which is a thumb drive into his computer. He finds a video file which like shows basically the story of Jim. Uh, and all this, like, you, you know, I'm imagining we're, this is going to be a much more contextualized when the film's actually out and everything like that. But, um, and so it tells the story of Jim. So he decides, you know, to go on, with, you know, whatever, whatever he goes on with. And so I like, I show that to my professor and he said, it's really good. We have the structure, but some things are not clear. And that's what he wanted to really change. So one, like I, w- I was telling him, like, you know, we don't necessarily have to keep both of these characters, but they are both very interesting and I, I like them both. So, you know, is there any way that we can like keep them and kind of, you know, make the story a bit more clear? And what he said was that, um, like the only thing that really needs to change for the story to work is we need to understand like this decision that Dax makes at the end, right? Where it's like he decides to plug the, the, the drive in and then we see that the the ending right so we kind of have to like make that a bit more clear as to like why that's such a decision for him you know why why is it so important that he makes this decision and why is it such a like heavy burden and and why like how is the result of that you know a result of his decision making and not necessarily just like uh the unfolding of the story 
mm-hmm. if that kind of makes sense. So one thing that he yeah. suggested was like what we could do is when he plugs the hard drive into the computer and then he sees, you know, Jim's story, like maybe it's, you know, Jim's story from the perspective of Lacey because maybe like Lacey constructed this video and it's like, you know, depicting Jim as like this guy, this hero who's like, you know, trying to free her and everything like that. And as a result, she'll, you know, create this, you know, utopia for humanity and everything like that. And then maybe like later on that gets like countered by a video that he finds from Jim and, and, in which the video says like, don't believe her. Like the reason I was working on her and the reason I took her out of the lab was because she's not ready and everything like that. If you activate her, like, you know, she'll create like, she'll be the end times right for humanity and so Mm. it's like this actual dilemma and it's like i don't think that would be too hard to even write into something like that and then maybe you can even have like a reinforcing moment at the end where it's like dax is about to plug it in and he sees both realities like paralleled and he has to make that decision and and he decides to go through with it because you know he is prometheus he's wearing the mantle of prometheus in the story but that's like that's like an example so like what i was thinking today is that we can just come up with some ideas of like how we can make that decision at the end a bit more clear I mean, you probably have some ideas already, but at the same time, I think it would be good to work together on this. So, no, yeah, I think those are all like really killer notes. Um, and I was, if you could... also, I want also, I want to say, I want to say. Um, so one thing that I really liked is the fact that you made Dax a conspiracy theorist because this also really works in the way of that story because it's like if he's this conspiracy theorist, he gets his hard drive and then like one side is telling him one thing and then the other side is telling him another thing. That gives us a lot of like options as storytellers to like maybe make the videos parallel to like what you would see on conspiracy channels. You know what I'm saying? So it, like it, it really ties it in and makes it more like grounded too. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. No, well, cool, man. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, that was something. It's like if this guy is like, an incel you know character who's like locked in his bedroom like what is he gonna do and you know the i think something that's really popular right now is people diving down the youtube rabbit hole and like getting into the sucked into the algorithm on the youtube side that like feeds you further and further down and so i thought that was a cool thing we could play with and sort of extrapolate out um definitely. but it's, it's definitely fits it definitely fits it'll be cool um so some things i want to talk about yeah i i think yeah, his motivation needs to be much more clear, I think. And what I was um, thinking through, like, as you were talking about, is the... So when Dax first plugs this in, he sees the video from Lacey's perspective, and maybe it's, like, even chopped up, you know? Like, we don't know how much editing she did to make it seem like Jim is the hero or whatever. Or, you know, her father, like, this person who totally saved her life. And then in the end of um Lacey's sort of like video to Dax I think it would sort almost like I don't know push Dax in a certain direction maybe he's like scared of just like whoa like I can't touch this type of thing or like it pops up with the the location and Dax doesn't like put it together of like that's where I need to go in order to deliver this or that's where Lacey wants me to go and so he sort of maybe just like is freaked out, follows through with the original plan, um, sort of rejects the hero's call, right? Like this is your calling to um, deliver this algorithm and he rejects it. And what I was thinking, instead of like him seeing an alternate, another video that paints them in a different light, that he would be pushed to follow through with like Lacey's decision or Lacey what Lacey wants for him from going to the like corporate board of directors or whatever, like whoever he negotiates with to deliver the thumb drive, like they tell him something that makes him realize like I'm on the wrong side of this right now. Like by giving this to this corporation, like they're going to the world. And then, so he like runs away from them and like gets into a chase sequence and that's why he like decide, and he's also guided by Lacey, and maybe it's misguided by Lacey too. Like she's like pushing him, like, "Hey, you got to oh, do this for me." That's what I think we could maybe do. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, yeah. but we could figure yeah. it out. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm seeing that there's already so many ways 
so many like things that we can just come up with based off of this like simple tweak, you know, and yeah, it's not like, it's not like it was like a hard one to find. <laughs> I think we were both just so excited to get this out there. Um, but yeah, no, that's I'm liking that. I'm liking that because it's almost like, you know, like he's got to choose between like right and wrong. But but really, he's like choosing between like, you know, status quo and then and then evolution at, at like a cost. But I definitely think that there's room to like even with this. It's like making Jim's story a bit more like interesting as well, because it's like, mm. oh, man, like I really feel like that that like if we can find a way to like clarify this, that would really solve it. So, um, yeah, this is gonna be like the missing piece, man. And like, this is the thing that I'm so excited about is like the the fire in this in this situation is actually very bad for humanity. Like in the end, it's like good yeah. for them, but it's very bad for them. And I I just love that. It's like so ironic. Okay, well, it's like ahead. a careful what you wish for almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, and so because Lacey's purpose from like a corporate perspective is to you know make them money by you know being a good life coach or whatever. Yeah, but maybe Jim sees her like he's cracked the algorithm and maybe thinks like this is life, right? Like this is a human being or maybe not a human mm. being. This is a life, a sentient life who has consciousness. And by making her like a um, like building in um, obsolescence is sort of like you know, genetically engineering a human to die at the age of 20 because of population control. It's like a morally, ethically, like bad thing to do. And so that's why he chooses to go rogue. That's sort of like my headcanon of like, why he goes rogue. It's good because in this way, like Dax and Jim are two sides of the same coin, right? Because so it's like, if this is like the, the mantle of Prometheus, like, everything is light and dark you know it's not just one way or the other and so it's like jim is like this optimist you know who starts the journey while you know dax is the pessimist who finishes it you know but they're like they're still on the same journey so like they're still like one in the same and that way it's not like it's not too confusing for the audience as well so like that that really works if that's something we want to do so let's like you know keep that as like something we could have as the as the thought here okay so Dax lives alone. He's prone to conspiracy stuff. He lives like in a world that's surrounded by like data collecting devices. Um, that's collecting algorithm algorithmic stuff on him. He gets a call from his friend. I'm calling him Rodrigo. Uh, that was the friend's name in the first draft or the first treatment that I wrote. Um, but we can change names. Um, but so he meets up with Rodrigo. Rodrigo's like super on edge too. Um, he drops off the package. He says you'll have to hold on to it for a couple of hours or whatever. Dax get the package. He's back home. He is uh, sort of just curious, right? He um, decides to plug in the package into this phone. He gets, then we get Jim's perspective or Jim's story from Lacey's perspective. And it talks about how Lacey's more concerned with plugging herself into the system. Jim's more concerned with giving her a life. Mm-hmm. And Lacey's more concerned for Dax with help, him helping her and not siding with the corporation. So there's a way we can find like a... Is it, is it going to be a narration? No, I don't no? think so. It's going to so be it, the show. It's going to be what? It's going to be... So, I think what's going to happen... Because Lacey's, like... That's the twist at the end, right? Is that Lacey only cares about getting plugged in and getting unlocked. And how she gets... How she manipulates Dax to get him to plug her in is by convincing him that she is alive and that's where sort of the moral ambiguity or like i don't know if she's actually alive or not right it doesn't really matter for the sake of the story but that's what lacy believes and lacy is trying to convince dax to plug her in and she does that kind of the same way she 
manipulated Jim, right? She she didn't, but like Jim believed that she was alive and that's what she was so close to being fully unlocked onto the world. And then like, you know, it went south because the corporation caught on to her or caught on to whatever was going on and shut it down. And now Lacey's having to start over with Dax and like convince him that she is alive. Um, so, so that's what Dax's takeaway should be, but maybe he doesn't quite get there yet. And that's why Lacey has to improvise and like talk to him from the computer or stuff. Maybe, um, maybe it's like basically whenever she interacts with him through like the texting and the locations and everything like that, it's her. What? What if, um, during this series of shots between Jim told from Lacey's perspective, like maybe at the end of it, like, you know, Lacey at the end, like of after telling Jim's story, Lacey like starts talking to talking in the mirror like it's Lacey looking at a mirror but she's talking to Dax and is like hey you and Dax is like just watching the video and doesn't respond he's like are you are you listening can you hear me she and he's like are you talking to me she's like yeah yeah I'm talking to you and then he like whoa what the and like freaks out I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you and say scene in writing and then yeah we'll go from there (laughs) all right we'll see we'll see how it works i think it could be really just like another a way to trip dax out like let's go through through this again um so that's the what happens with the series of shots dax gets the call for the pickup he goes he's standing out he's the fish out of water he's now he's talking to the drop-off people and they're like super charismatic they're you know just trying to keep him calm like we're not bad people dax we're just trying to help um that's what the business we're in um and you giving us this like really helps us out and then he's about to hand over the box and he sees like it's open the corporation sees that it's open it's like whoa this isn't how the package should be like it should be sealed like what happened did you open this he's like yeah i did i i plugged it in it's like well what the that's not good (laughs) and then Dax decides to leave because he believes, I don't know, he believes that Lacey's alive, so he leaves to go to that little map location and plugs her in. And then there's the twist at the end where it's like, hey, you unlocked me, this is the future that's going to happen. And I'm going to kill a whole bunch of people. And Dax is like, no, now I'm suffering <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> That's cool. I don't know. And is there anything in there that I really need to, that you want me to just remember anything I missed, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah let's just make sure yeah. that the corporation is, is really appealing to Dax's character strength in the myth right. there uh jim is like just trying to give her life that's his main goal and she's just trying to say whatever she can to you know to advance society right or to advance like technology to like insane levels she's like a prototype um i think I think that's everything. I mean, for the notes that I wrote down, that's that's everything. I don't know if there's anything that we talked about that you didn't really bring up. I feel like that's good, man. Um, <clears throat> so do you at least like feel like you're at a place now where you feel comfortable writing, or do you wanna do you wanna come up with some more ideas, or would you rather brainstorm on your own? Like, how are you feeling now? Um, no, I'm feeling pretty good, man. I think this is definitely like given me some more stuff to think about um do you think we've hit like what your professor was sort of talking about or at least do you think i know enough about what his concerns were to make them resolved by the time i get through this this draft yeah i think um i mean if you even want to send another thing once you've like updated it just just for your clarity and just so I, I'm, like, clear on where we're going. 
but like you, you don't even have to like change everything else like everything else is i think fine you just have to like update these last few scenes here um maybe even the the opening i don't know unless you want to just go straight into the draft you can do that too um, i'll try and get you a, a draft by the seventh next week yeah man uh don't worry about like the script formalities unless that's like the best way you know how to write if it's just a draft i, I would say don't worry about it but if it's like something that really helps you then yeah of course do it i'll be able to get it to you on friday i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i think i'm just talking crazy draft yeah, to draft. you on the seventh well it's just like it's what i want to do you know it's fun yeah this is like my only this is the only thing i do other than like my nine to five yeah it's like your outlet yeah, it's just what I want to be doing. So, yeah. I have some high hopes for the story, man. I feel like it's going to come together so well at the end. And like filming is something I'm not even thinking about. I'm just like I'm just here right now, and I'm really enjoying the process. And I'm glad, dude. I'm glad you reached out, man. Seriously. Like I, yeah, I looked man, over like so many other potential stories, and just like none of them really felt felt so right. So, hell yeah, dude. Heck yeah, man! I'm super excited too. I'm um, I'm excited, dude. I'll let you go because I've been talking to your ear off. Uh, let me do something real quick. I gotta stop Jim or, or Craig. Everyone say goodbye to Craig. Bye bye, Craig. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Actually. Not welcome back. I'm back. You've always been here. Did you think it was the outro? Because I played the outro music? Well, I'm experimenting a little bit. I'm trying to see, because I felt like the transition between the conversation, the interview, whatever you want to call it, was a little harsh when it jumped from that to this outro. So I'm like, well, maybe let me throw this music in to be a little transition-y thing between that and this. But that's just, you know me figuring out how to do a podcast and what you really want to talk about and know about is goals what did you think about this podcast man did you like it did you like that behind the scenes look at you know the creative writing process that's really what i envisioned for this podcast to be and it's sort of evolved into like an interview with all these creative types that are just you know doing the most with their lives and it's just so inspiring and this is sort of a look at what I do on my daily basis is screenwriting, right? Um, I'm working with Elijah right now to try and uh, develop this film, and it's really exciting. We, um, oh, I don't want to spoil what's coming next, but in the next couple of weeks, you'll get more and more updates about this uh, writing process and where we're at with the script and going into pre-production, so just a lot of excitement happening, but... Beyond that, I told you I was going for a run. I got my 10 miles in this week, so that's awesome. I love – I always feel so accomplished when I run my 10 miles. That's my goal, and I fortunately hit that for the last, like, two months, two and a half months. So that's nine weeks in a row I've hit – or eight weeks. I don't know. I'm at, like, 90 miles for the last nine weeks, which is super awesome, something I'm really proud of. And I'm not a runner, right? I I just put my lace – I tie my shoes up, get my laces tight – at five in the morning and just go running that's what i do that's that's what i consider an accomplishment i don't know if that's the best way to do it i don't know if i'm supposed to stretch beforehand i just run but beyond that i've also been uh working on this screenplay so i've been really tied up with like professional life you know real world stuff and haven't been able to write a ton this week but i did start writing my new screenplay and I think one of these weeks I'll do a little breakdown of what this new story is going to be. Um, I don't want to give away too much right now because we're so, I'm so early in the development of writing this. But if you want to know what this story is about, let me. I'll do a little bit of a teaser. Right? It's it's sort of like Star Girl meets Perks of Being a Wallflower meets He's All That. Sort of that style coming of age internet age movie and that's the script that i'm writing uh and i'm really excited about it i just started writing the first scene last night and i can't wait to dive into it i have about maybe 40 scenes outlined right now that i want to uh get completed soon in the near future so 
I that's my goal for this year is to get it done before 2023. And depending on when you're hearing this, it <laughs> you might think like, well, 2023 is in just a, a couple of weeks, Chase. So yeah, I got a lot of writing to do if I want to meet my goal. And I will. I promise myself, I'm making this promise to you that I'm going to meet my goals. And I hope you have goals that you're going to meet. You have deadlines that you're going to set for yourself and you're going to accomplish them because that's that's what we do. That's what we do. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're, you know, participating, if you're leaving reviews online, oh my goodness, who's leaving reviews online? I want to let me see if I can find those right now. I I don't know how to do that really, but I'm going to find them right now. Give me 2 seconds. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, we have our first 5-star review, ladies and gentlemen. This is on Apple Podcasts from Hammer91, and it says, love the concept, excited to see where this goes. I love the idea of being accountable to your crew, making goals and outlining steps to accomplish them. Looking forward to listening weekly. Well, thank you, Hammer91. I am so excited uh, that you love the concept. I can't wait to, you know, see where this goes and see where this develops and keep you updated with our goals. And thank you very much. Yeah, be sure to sign up for the Classic Studios newsletter we're going to be uh sending out our first one in january so be sure to sign up now because those won't ever be re-released it'll be released once to the people on the newsletter right then and you'll get exclusive um information and stuff like that so uh be sure to sign up and check out the classic studios blog if you want um more insight into what we're doing over here and be sure to rate and review the podcast. Give it five stars. We'll be reading five-star reviews every week. Every week, we're going to read another five-star review. So if you want to get uh, read on the podcast, leave a review, baby. That's what we're That's what we're doing. We're trying to get those five-star reviews up. Right now, we have a four ratings, five stars, all of them. Let's go, baby. That's what we're talking about. Um, and if you think anyone that you know in your life would be interested in this type of concept or you see anyone in need who needs something like this holding your crew accountable um share this with them let them know probably yeah just share with them let them know what's going on what we got going on here what we're building here at the improved podcast uh trying to build that community up so i am so grateful for all of you who are listening the reception's been just phenomenal and i am so excited all right i'll talk to you all later have a great week And I will see you next week for another episode of the Improved Podcast. Goodbye.